A few years ago, a newspaper in Denmark published cartoons making fun of the Prophet Muhammad. This immediately offended the religious sentiments of millions of Muslims, resulting in public indignation, protests, and even violence. The Muslims felt that their most revered prophet, as well as all the teachings and beliefs that he represented, were desecrated. One Muslim wrote, We can understand criticisms or sarcastic representation of customs or traditions, but not about Quran, Allah, and the Prophet. He also noted that in many countries, they consider it illegal to insult or desecrate the national flag. So he asked, Shouldn't we consider religious symbols on an equal level with the symbols of secular institutions? Indeed, if we feel deeply insulted when foreigners trample our flag, should we not be angry when people who are self-confessed Catholics draw a caricature of Jesus and make a mockery of our deeply held religious conviction? You know, in this age of political correctness, the age of diversity and inclusiveness, it is ironic that very few Catholics protest against people who make fun of the Catholic Church and its most sacred teachings. We are afraid to defend our faith and stand up and fight for what we truly believe in. In our Gospel reading today, Jesus tells us, Fear no one. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. For everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. So my dear friends, Jesus is asking us to stand up for what we truly believe in. But does this mean that we really have to speak out when we feel like the Muslims felt, that our deeply held religious devotions and beliefs are blatantly dishonored and debased by others? Now, most of us prefer to remain neutral. We think, you know, we should look for a middle ground. We should strike a balance between these competing opinions and convictions. And oftentimes, we do this to avoid quarrels, to avoid conflicts, to avoid alienating anyone, and to resolve amicably the conflict between irreconcilable factions. But sometimes if we do this, we succeed more in being politically correct than morally accurate and certain. You know, the ancient philosopher said, that virtue stands in the middle. But I don't think that they equated the middle or the golden mean with an overly cautious middle ground. Besides, if you notice, the most dangerous place to walk is in the middle of a busy street. So the question remains, in a bitterly divided society, is it all right to be neutral and not to take sides? Let me tell you this. It is not always right that we have to remain neutral in every conflict. 
To seek to reconcile opposing factions or positions is to misunderstand the meaning of reconciliation. Reconciliation is not an absolute principle that must be applied in all cases of conflict. You know, the model envisaged by this approach is one that might be called a private quarrel arising from mere misunderstanding. But not all conflicts are just private quarrels. In some conflicts, one side is right, the other is wrong. One side is unjust and oppressive, while the other side suffers injustice and oppression. So Jesus did not say that we Christians must reconcile good and evil, justice and injustice. We are supposed to do away with evil and injustice and to uphold truth and justice. So the commonly held view that Christians should always seek a middle ground in every dispute wrongly assume that tensions and conflicts are worse evil than injustice and oppression. Sometimes our stubborn attitude of neutrality in the midst of bitter conflict is a way of siding with injustice and falsehood. Recently, a huge controversy flared up in the United States when a famous baseball team, the Los Angeles Dodgers, honored the group whose members call themselves the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. This group is composed of gay men who wear the religious attire of Catholic nuns and sisters. They perform on streets and many other venues to publicly insult and parody or spoof Christian doctrines and teachings, especially on sex, gender, and morality. So for instance, while Jesus commands us to sin no more, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence encourage their followers with this slogan, Go forth and sin some more. Now, many Catholics in the United States did not mind them. In fact, many of them support this group. But one baseball player, a Catholic, whose name is Trevor Williams, went on Twitter to express his view on this matter. Immediately, he got around 20 million tweets. Why? Williams said that he respects the LGBTQ group and their advocacy. But he also said to invite and honor a group that makes a blatant and deeply offensive mockery of my Catholic religion undermines the values of respect and inclusivity that should be upheld by any organization. You know, when asked if he was afraid that his statements would have a bad effect on his career, he said, I have to say what I have to say. I cannot remain neutral while our Lord is being mocked. I know what I will say will not be taken lightly by many people who have no sympathy for the Catholics. But for me, defending my faith is a duty. And besides, he added, when I die, St. Peter would not ask me what is my baseball record in 2023. Rather, he would ask me, did you acknowledge me before others? If you did not because you were afraid of what people will say, then I will not also acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. You know, the supporters of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence responded to Trevor Williams by saying that the group has every right to express their views on morality and religion 
because the United States is a country that upholds freedom of expression. They say we are free to say what we like. You know, my dear friends, freedom is the catchword of our time. But freedom has been equated with the absolute license to do what one wants. It is a freedom that respects no limits or absolutes. That is why today, in the name of freedom, in the name of diversity, inclusivity, and democracy, many people reject the idea of universal truth. The only universal truth, they say, is that there is no universal truth. There are only interests, felt needs, ambitions, and the desire to satisfy all of these. So today, convenience, profit, power, not morality, have become the highest norm of public and personal conduct. The words of Jesus, the truth will make you free, remains our best guide in the exercise of authentic freedom. All of us are searching for the truth, but as long as we ignore Jesus, who said that He is the way, the truth, and the light, our pursuit of freedom and liberation will always lead, lead us to a bitter disillusionment. We will say, yes, I am so free. We are so free, but we are so lost. Isn't that tragic? 